What's up guys, how's it going? Mr. Arnold here, and thank you for watching and being a part of this History Comes Alive episode. We have a great episode planned for you guys. We're gonna divide it into three distinct segments. The first segment we're gonna go over is prehistory and early humans. Then we're gonna transition into the turning point that we know as the Neolithic Revolution. And last but not least, we're gonna talk about the factors that make up civilization. So make sure you guys are taking great copious notes and paying close attention. There's a lot of great stuff yet to come. All right guys, prehistory is going to be our first segment of this video. And the thing to keep in mind with prehistory is it's the time before writing. Writing has not been established yet by humankind, it's not been invented. So you have to keep in mind how records are kept. They're either done through oral traditions or through expressive works such as maybe cave paintings like these. Now, we don't really have a firm grasp on what exactly happened during the prehistoric times, but thanks to people such as historians who write about history using facts or interpretations, we have an idea, as well as certain people such as Barry Leakey, who are anthropologists who study specific things. They're in a specialized field. And we know of Mary Leakey, she studied basically the footprints of hominids that were living in East Africa close to about 3.5 million years ago. In addition to anthropologists, we also have archaeologists who study material remains of distinct cultures, such as things such as a pottery or jewelry. And guys, this helps interpret our past and gives us an idea of what's going on. Prehistory times are usually associated with the Old Stone Age, the Paleolithic era, so this is going to lead nicely into our next segment, which is going to be dealing with the Neolithic Revolution. Remember, Neo means new, but make sure you guys are continuing to take great notes. There's a lot of great stuff to come. guys, Mr. Arnold coming back at you, and now we're going to go over the Neolithic Revolution. Now, the Neolithic Revolution is something that's so important to this course in global history that you guys got to keep in mind all year round. This is very important because it's a shift, it's a turning point in humankind history unlike any other. It changes the way people live. Before, in the Paleolithic era, people were living off the land. They were living on pastures, attending to their livestock. There were nomads. Now, people started to settle because they found agriculture. They started to develop crops and harvest them. As a result, there are cities that have become established, like this one, Jericho. Now, not only are certain cities established, but with those cities, there's also social classes that you have to keep in mind. This is where we start to see divisions, not only amongst men and women, but in job specialization. We start to see people who are farmers, or warriors, kings, queens, priests, metal workers, that sort of thing. It's so important. It's where we start to see people that are having more of a specialized job. In addition to this, the Neolithic Revolution brings about great change in the way animals are raised. Before, they might have been wild, lots of them, but this is where we start to see certain animals, maybe like the dog or the cat, or most notably, the cow, taking an important role in human life. They're not only used for nourishment, such as milk or meat, and that sort of thing. They're also used to help farm. They're used to help you know, provide the plow, the strength to get through the fields, and that sort of thing. And last but not least, Neolithic Revolution ultimately brings about change. It's going to be a big change from the way humankind lived before. And this is going to lead us into the way cities are built as well as maybe civilizations and the many factors that contribute to civilizations. So we're almost home guys, keep watching, we have one more segment to go. Alright guys, Mr. Arnold coming back for our last segment which is the many factors of civilization. Now when we talk about the factors of civilization, we're going to only keep it to five. 
I know with the Neolithic Revolution, we had talked about maybe the social classes or job specialization, which can also be considered a factor. So we might have seven for civilization, but let's keep it down to five. Now, when we talk about civilizations, you gotta keep in mind this. There's a lot of people living within a big area, or it could be small in some instances. Remember the Neolithic Revolution? People are settling down. So what are we gonna need? What is humankind gonna need? They're gonna need a government. In a lot of cases, there was either a king or queen that resided with the power, but also, this is actually going to tie into our second factor, which is organized religion as well. There was a priest in a theocracy in which a religious official actually had lots of political power as well. Now, the religions back then, they were varied and it was very diverse. However, some of them were very, very powerful and actually had a stronghold on the government as well. Oftentimes, they ask for sacrifices so that it can pay off and provide a great harvest for what they thought was the gods of maybe the sun and that sort of thing. This is where we see certain things maybe as crops being harvested or maybe animals and in some cases human sacrifices. Yes, that did happen. Our third component that I want to get into is arts and architecture. This is the first time where we start to see culture take a place, the way of life, the way people are raised the society that they're living in, in the way of life they do it so. So this is where we start to see certain things maybe like palaces, you know, really take shape and really have an artistic meaning behind it, as well as other, you know, religious temples and that sort of thing. It kind of takes more of a stronghold and gives it an artistic flavor that we all love. <clears throat> and then we also, our fourth factor that we're going to talk about is public works. Because we have a large population of people, living in a given area, there has to be some sort of infrastructure to meet the needs of all. This is where we see maybe roads are being built, or trade networks, or bridges that are connecting everybody within the civilization we live in. And our last factor that we're going to get into is trade. Trade is a very important factor that makes up civilization. A lot of the factors that I've just discussed can be applied today, and trade is one that has a lot of weight, even until this day. Now, trade is obviously something that incorporates, yes, that's right, one of our key themes for this whole unit, cultural diffusion. The exchange of ideas, customs, subjects, you know, different things that take place. This helps humankind not only advance, but makes life easier. We're talking about te technology as well, especially with the Neolithic Revolution. We start to see a lot of trade take place. Now, those have been the five factors that make up civilization. I hope this video has been a great tool for you and it's really prepared you for whatever assessment or test is on the horizon. Thank you for watching. It's Mr. Arnold, and I'll see you guys next time.